in this video, we're going to take a look at this mathematics book. To me, this is a very interesting book. I love the color of the cover. And it just has like this old school feel. It's called Elementary Linear Algebra with Applications. It is the second edition. And it was written by Richard O'Hill Jr. Elementary Linear Algebra. It's my hardcover. I don't know if this book is available. Maybe it's been reprinted multiple times. Maybe it hasn't. I will look and I will leave a link in the description to this book in case you want to check it out. Nice. Richard Hill Jr., Michigan State University. Let's see if we can find copyright date. Here we go. Copyright 1991. Wow. That was a long time ago. Here is the preface. Let's take a look at this very carefully. Elementary Linear Algebra with Applications, second edition, covers the basic material of linear algebra, giving students both an understanding of the theory and an appreciation of the applications which motivate it, while giving the instructor considerable flexibility in the way many topics can be covered in the course. Cool. Let's go look at the contents and then we'll take a look at some of the mathematics for this book. So the prereqs uh, for, a, for a course in linear algebra uh, in a college will vary from school to school. Some colleges might require maybe that you take a Calculus two course before you take uh, a linear algebra course, simply so that you have some exposure to, to math. Um, knowing how to write proofs is very beneficial, but it's certainly not a requirement. Um, most schools nowadays have two courses, by the way. They'll have like a computational course and like a proof-based course. Um, so you, you get like a more gentle introduction. So chapter one is on introduction to linear equations and matrices. Chapter two is on determinants. So very computational stuff, right? Nothing really crazy. Three is vector spaces. So here you get some proofs and stuff, but you can still do computational things. Uh, with vector spaces. You don't have to be a, you know, a proof writing master. You can still learn linear algebra, but to learn, uh, you know, to understand the proofs, then yes, you do need to know proofs. This is really important, matrices as linear transformations. Eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And then further directions, function spaces, Ooh, matrix norms. And then we have an appendix and answers to the odd numbered exercises in the back of the book. Let's start by looking in the back of the book. I always like to start like by doing like, you know, what you're not supposed to do. Like, oh, don't look in the back of the book. You know, when you're, when you're working on problems, <gasps> we have found a mystery. There is a mystery piece of paper in this book. This is not mine. Uh, I'm just gonna take it off the camera here to open it because if someone's name's on it, I don't want to put the name in the video. No, it's just an empty piece of paper. It's almost like yellowed. A bit of whiff, yeah. So I'm gonna leave it there. I feel like it's part of the book. It came with the book. Um, some person put this paper there and I shall uh, perhaps leave it there for a while. So we were looking at the answers. Let's go there. So you can see that there are quite a few. Right, you've got the odd numbered ones, so yeah even has some graphs and stuff, so uh, excellent, excellent work. Right, very, very useful uh, for self-study. One of the things uh, I'm liking about this book is that uh, it, the, 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 uh, the exercises are um, somewhat standard and stuff. So like if you're taking a linear algebra class, then in theory, um, this, this could be very, very beneficial to you because you could use this as a supplement, so you would get different explanations. You might say, well, I already have a linear algebra book. Yeah, um, and you probably have notes too, and oftentimes, not always, depending on the professor, uh, professors will take their notes uh, from books, um, at least initially, and then they, they modify them over the years, and then uh, eventually you get some professors that just walk in and just, you know, they just start going nuts, right? All kinds of mathematics just start showing up on the board, uh, and they barely have any notes. So, yeah. 
Pretty cool. Here's Kramer's rule. This is something you might have seen before. If you took a pre-calc class, at least in the US, if you take pre-calc, that's when you learn Kramer's rule. Um, you usually do it simply, though, for uh, two equations with two unknowns. Here, uh, there's an example with three equations and three unknowns. So that means that the, deter the determinants become three by three determinants. If you just had two unknowns and two equations, you would have two by two determinants, and so it's much, much easier. So there is a lot of computational, um, there, are, there are a lot of computational aspects. Oh, this is cool. So whoever was using this book uh, before us was highlighting things. Definition, let A be an M by N matrix. The set of all X such that AX equals to zero, equals zero, is called the null space of A, it's denoted by NS of A. So A here is a matrix, okay, X is a vector, Zero is also a vector, okay? This is the zero vector because you're taking a matrix and you're multiplying it by a vector, so you're going to get a vector, right? So, and yeah, pretty cool. It's called the null space. Very important stuff. And it's not hard, by the way. Uh, in order to get through this type of stuff, you do need to know some proofs. Uh, as you can see here, there's a proof here. And some other proofs here. Oh, definition. Here's a definition. This is a good one. This one's really important. This is one that like you have to know cold. Like it's like breathing. So vector W is called a linear combination of these vectors here, V sub one through V sub K. If there are numbers A sub one through A sub K, such that W is, and I'm just gonna say W is a linear combination because that's what it means. So it, that this is, so when someone says linear combination, boom, you should know that. And you can have linear combinations of different types of vectors. Vectors can be functions. We're not just talking about vectors like the ones you see here, right? Uh, in vector spaces, um, you know, anything that is uh, an element of a vector space is technically a vector. And you have vector spaces where the elements are functions or, you know, matrices or other things, you know, polynomials. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it gets really abstract when you get into um, like category theory. Because so what I just said there was people call that abstraction, right? So you, know, you always think about a vector as you know, something like this. But to think about a vector a different way, uh, in a more general way, uh, as just you know, an element of a vector space that allows you to use different things as vectors. And so you can do that with other things too. And um, that's like you know, the beginning of category theory. Um, if you've ever uh, delved into that. But yeah, pretty cool book. I uh, just wanted to show it to you here in this video. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. Also, I have courses on my website, mathsorcer.com or freemathvids.com. They're actually on Udemy, but check them out if you want to learn math through my website. And that's it. Keep doing mathematics. Take care.